Hello everyone. So in this video, I will do an example um, on a D flip flop in which the setup time will be satisfied. So previously in the previous video, I did an example on the same flip flop. Only uh, in that example, the setup time was not satisfied. Now we want to see if with the new um, setup that we have for this flip flop, if the setup time will be um, satisfied or not. So as you can see here, the only thing that we changed was that the clock period has been changed. So before the clock period was um, nine nanoseconds. Now in this new setup, the clock period is <clears throat> 15 nanoseconds. So by the clock period, I mean the time between two um, active edges of the clock. So basically we have t equal to one nanosecond is my first active edge of the clock, which is the rising edge of the clock. And at t equal to 15, uh, 16 nanoseconds is my second rising edge of the clock. So it is one period and it is 15 nanoseconds. All right, so the same as we did for the previous video, we know that after the active edge of the clock, the state of Q should change. So Q is equal to one. So after the active edge of the clock, the amount, the value of Q should be equal to the value of D input before the rising edge of the um, clock. So basically Q should go to zero, but we know that the flip-flop has a five nanoseconds delay. So one, two, three, four, five. So Q will remain one for five more nanoseconds. So here is the time in which Q will change a state. So Q will remain zero until the next um, change in the state of the clock, actually the next active edge of the clock. So we know that the falling edge is not the active edge. So the state of the Q will not change at this state, but it will change when the rising edge of the clock is happening again. So D, as you can see in our flip-flop, D is equal to Q prime. So whenever Q is equal to one, D should be zero. So here we have D equal to zero, but at T equal to six nanoseconds, we can see that Q changes from one to zero. So D, the data input, should change from zero to one. But since Q should pass through this inverter to give me the input D, the data input D, then the delay of the inverter should be considered here. So for another two nanoseconds, the input D will not change. And then at t equal to eight nanoseconds, D should be the complement of Q. So D should go to one. All right, so this is where D will go to one. Now, here that we have our input data and also our Q, uh, the state of the Q, we wanna see if the setup time has been satisfied or not. So what we said about the setup time was that the setup time is the amount of time before the rising, uh, before the active edge of the clock in which the input D, the data input, should not change. So basically before 16 nanoseconds, which is the active edge of the clock, active edge, D should not change for three nanoseconds before that. Let's see if this is happening here or not. So in this period of time, you shouldn't have any change in D. And you can see here that D is not changing in this period. So we can say that this um, flip-flop with this timing is satisfying uh, the setup time. And also you can see that there is a five nanosecond of extra time between the time the D input is correct and the time when it must be correct for the setup time to be satisfied. 
but it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter that we have this five nanosecond extra. So we have this extra time in between, but um, this is nothing to be worried about because we are satisfying our setup time um, specification. Okay, so here we can say that the setup time is satisfied. All right. Uh, so if we use a shorter clock period and we have less extra time or no extra time, um, it would be also um, correct. So it doesn't matter if we have this much extra time or more than this or less than this. Until we have satisfied the setup time, it is fine. So basically, uh, whenever you have a shorter clock period in which you have no extra time it means that you have the minimum clock period so by that i mean that for example if we have a clock period of of 10 nanoseconds this is my minimum clock period So this means that I, well, when I have a clock period of 10 nanoseconds in this example up here, I won't have any extra time between the D input is correct and the requirement of the setup time. All right, so let's see what I mean by that. So we have one nanosecond here. So this is the rising edge of the clock. And here. So as I said, we have 10 nanoseconds of a clock period. So let me draw this with another color so it will be more visible. All right, so 10 nanoseconds, it means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So at t equal to 11 nanoseconds, clock should have another active edge. Okay, so here if I want to um, find the state of Q and also my D input. Oh, and we know that Q is equal to 1 here, and then D is equal to 0. Okay, so the same as we did before, we know that for 5 nanoseconds after the active edge of the clock, Q will not change due to the delay of the flip-flop. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So Q will remain at 1 until t equal to 6 nanoseconds and then it goes back to 0 until the next um, active edge of the clock and we know that since um, flip-flop has a 5 nanoseconds of delay this is 0 until another 5 nanoseconds now for d so the same as we had before, D is a complement of Q, so D should remain at 0 until T equal to 6 nanosecond, but we know that the inverter has 2 nanoseconds of delay, so D will remain at 0 until 8 nanoseconds, and then it will turn off to 1. Okay? So here, you can see that the setup time, which was 3 nanoseconds, so exactly 3 nanoseconds 
before uh, the active edge of the clock, D changes from zero to one, and after that, it didn't change anymore, right? So you see that this is tight, tied up all the timings. So up here, you see that five nanoseconds before the setup time, D has been equal to one, right? And it was not changing since then. But down here, you will see that D goes to one at T equal to eight nanosecond, and then from eight nanoseconds to 11 nanosecond, which is my active edge of the clock, D has not been changed, and this is three nanoseconds, which is exactly equal to T setup. So here, we are saying that we have a minimum clock period. All right, so I hope you have learned how to determine a minimum clock period. And if you have any question, you can um, leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.